everybody it's Michelle and I've got a really fun punch art for you guys today for Halloween we're gonna do a cauldron this is super simple and so much fun I'm using my oval dies I've got the three smallest ones here just the three in order you can use larger ones if you want to but I thought these three smallest ones worked well for what I was wanting to do so with the medium one here I've got three black ovals cut out and one green glitter oval. I thought that was really pretty. And then in the larger one here, I have one black oval. I've got a strip of black cardstock here that was just left over from some trimming I was doing on my die organization. And I've got some circles cut out here in the green. And those are just a few varying sizes. I used a couple of the smaller ones from my Confetti Dots punch. I used my quarter inch handheld punch. And I used the 3 16 on my Cropodile. So just a few little small circles. And then I've got a little scrap piece here that I'm going to be using a little later on toward the end. And that's in an orange glitter cardstock. So for my three medium ovals here, you don't have to cut three of those. You can do it with one if you like. But this was just 65 pound weight cardstock and I didn't really think that was very sturdy. And I wanted a little bit of thickness and depth so it would stand out above the body of the cauldron. So I'm just going to put three of these together just to make them a little thicker. And I'm only going to worry about getting glue on the edge. And just stack those right on top of each other. And you can give that a few minutes to dry if you want to. But for time's sake for the video, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And that's what I'm using my smallest oval for. I'm going to get this not exactly center, but I'm going to scoot it down toward the bottom just a little bit to give us that offset look as if we're looking into the cauldron from an angle in front of it. I'm just going to hold that down with a little bit of tape. I'm just using painter's tape here. You can get any low-tack crafter's tape or washi tape. As long as it's low tack and it won't peel off the surface of your cardstock when you remove it. So I'm going to run it through and back again. And I'm going to go ahead and take that off and we can just take out the layers that did cut and pop that die right back in place and see if we can cut that last layer. And now that cut out our final layer. And I don't know, I don't think you guys can see but you really can see dimension on that in real life. It really looks as if you're looking down into an opening of something. And that's what I was going for. And I'll show you guys why I wanted that thickness. I'm going to put the green piece behind that. And I wanted the brim of the opening to look raised. And it does. So I can glue that right down onto my green piece, and that's going to be the brim of my cauldron. Don't worry too much about the glue. I'm using art glitter glue, and it will dry clear. But what I want to do is to make sure that I don't have a white edge or a green edge from that green cardstock layer. 
So I'm just going to take a Sharpie marker and just go around and color that white edge so that when we assemble our cauldron it'll just blend in seamlessly. I think I'm going to go ahead and set my cuddle bug out of the way so we can get started putting our cauldron together. So now I can zoom in a little bit and you guys can see better what I'm doing as I put this together. And for my narrow strip here, like I said, it's just the trimmings that I trimmed away, but I'm going to make use of that. And what I'm going to do, let's see, I probably won't need that much, so I'm going to cut it a little shorter. So I've got just a few inches here. Let's see, about two and three quarters. Doesn't have to be really precise. That was just a guess. And I'm going to take my confetti dots punch, or you could use any small circle punch. Because I'm just going to stick this in from the bottom into that smallest circle there. And I can do it over again since I didn't really have to be precise about the length. Just until I'm satisfied with what I get. Just a curved edge so it's not such a sharp corner on the bottom of that. And this is going to be the feet. To my cauldron. So now what I can do with that is just sort of bend it at an angle and I can play around with this until I get it the way I like it. We're rebending and rebending there but that's really not going to hurt anything because that part's going to be hidden. You could even cut this in half and just arrange each of the two feet individually if you wanted to do that. Okay, I think I like that placement right there. Let's see. Maybe I can use my grid on my mat here to help me get it lined up. And I think that does help. So I'm going to put some glue on there. And the majority of that's going to be hidden behind with just the little feet of our cauldron. And just to be honest with you, I'm not sure those are going to end up showing at all in the long run. We'll see. I'm going to put some flames around the bottom. And if you want to do it without the flames, you can definitely do the feet. But once we do the flames, I'm not sure if it's going to show. But we've got it there just in case. So now my top piece with my thick three layer rim, I just need some on the bottom of this because we're not going to put the whole thing down against our other piece. And I want that bottom edge that I brought my other die down closer to toward the bottom here and my wider brim up toward the top. And you can just pull it up or down, adjust it to however you want your cauldron to look. Totally up to you. I kind of like it right there. I think that is really cute. I really hope you guys can see some of the dimension on that brim. If not, I'll try to get some photos that maybe show that up a little later and include those toward the end of the video. Okay, so now for our flames. All I'm going to be doing is using a maple leaf punch. And I've had this for so many years, I can't even remember where I got it. But really, it doesn't even have to be a maple leaf. Really, any leaf kind of shape will make good flames. So I'm just going to punch out three or four of those. And I 
think that is beautiful flames. I love this glitter paper. This is some of that that I got at Joanne on my last visit, and that's the coordinations in Fire Spark. Perfect. And I'm going to take one of my Studio 71 alcohol markers in red, and I'm just going to maybe bring some red up into that also. And I think that's going to make it look even more like flames. And I'm just coming up from that center at the bottom and just flicking. Not really taking a lot of care. And I think it's going to look good. And now we can kind of play around with what we're going to do with these leaves. To get our flames going on there. So I think I'll take these two and kind of get them aligned right there. I'm going to go ahead and stick a little bit of art glitter glue in between them to help hold them to each other. And I'm just going to cut them to a rounded bottom right there. And then I'm going to stick these right on the bottom. And maybe that way we can still show the feet of our cauldron. This one, really all you need to do is make sure that you're getting rid of that stem on the bottom. I'm going to cut a little bit of a slit right there and see if maybe I can kind of put this one a little bit in front of and behind that leg of the cauldron. And then get some art glitter glue behind it. Hold it on. And I don't know if that split really helped it much. I don't think I'll worry about that on the next one. Okay, so just a little rounded edge. A little bit of glue down for that. And then we'll just lay it right on. I'm hoping that looks like maybe the flames are coming up from around underneath the bottom of that bowl part of the cauldron. And let's see. Maybe cut off a little bit of that that overhangs. And I'm going to see if I can get my scissors in here and trim up that edge a little bit. In hindsight, I think I would put these on the bottom of this bowl part first so I could trim evenly with the bottom of that and then put my feet on afterwards, I think. So I'm just going to bring my Sharpie in and go ahead and cover those white edges too. And there is our cauldron. I think that is so cute. And I think those little maple leaves just make the cutest little flames. And for our little circles here, you can just put those on any way you want. Most of these will probably go on after we turn this into a card. And some of them will be in the air. 
like the bubbles are floating up. Maybe some of them in here to add a little bit of bubbly dimension to our cauldron there. And I think I'm in love with this little cauldron. This little guy is just so cute. So you guys be sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you think of my little Halloween cauldron. I had so much fun and it is amazing what you can do with basic shapes if you just use a little bit of imagination. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a like over on my Facebook page and be sure to join our Facebook group Crafty Minds. And if you create any of these or any of your own, I would love to see them over there in the group. It is a great place for sharing your crafts. I just love to see what everybody is working on. And I think it's a wonderful community of crafters over there. So if you haven't joined already, go on over and request to join. We would love to have you in our group. Also follow me on Pinterest and Instagram. And don't forget to visit my blog. I'll put the links to everything in the description below. So be sure and check those out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.